more. We're going to find out more about a Moon to Mars challenge. It's calling on university students to develop innovative approaches to astronaut fitness. You know I'm going to geek out on this. And joining us with Stennis Space Center is Fernando to share, share a little more. Hey, Fernando. Hi, Rebecca. This Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This is so exciting. Okay, I never even thought about astronauts needing to stay fit in in space. So how important is fitness to astronauts? Well, uh, actually in space, uh, there are two main problems. It's gravity and radiation, right? Uh, and they are problems for the health of astronauts. So uh, in the case of, uh, you know, lack or decreased gravity, uh, Changes uh, that changes how the muscle and bone density are maintained uh, in the bodies of the astronauts. Uh, so, if astronauts are going to be returning to Earth, they, they must stay fit uh, so that upon return they may be physically enabled, so they may be able to do normal physical activity. And because of the challenges in terms of gravity, uh, in the case of space, zero gravity is a big challenge. Uh, uh, in the case of Mars, it's, uh, you know, Mars has 38% of the gravity of Earth, so the muscles are uh, exercised, uh, uh, you know, they, they have to exert less uh, less force in order to do the same type of activity that, that they would be doing on Earth. Very interesting. I never even uh, really thought about it, but I can see now, Fernando, why this makes uh, important work. And kudos to y'all for calling to the universities in Mississippi and college students to sort of think this through, some of the brightest minds. And y'all are doing this through the um, Intelligent Devices Equipment Instruments for Enabling Crew Health and Performance on Mars Project. There's got to be an acronym for that, Fernando. But tell us about this project. Yeah, uh, so this project actually encompasses, you know, more than a, a broader idea about maintaining crew health and performance, right? And it encompasses uh, capabilities that we have developed at Stennis in the Autonomous Systems Lab uh, about making systems behave uh, in an autonomous way in terms of how they operate and how they actually take care of themselves. Uh so for many years now, we've been working in this area, uh, and uh, it's been, you know, up and down, um, cyclic in terms of funding and so on, because that's what it takes to develop technologies. But since about 2012, we've had pretty steady funding from the uh, AES program, Advanced Exploration Systems program uh, from NASA headquarters. and. Uh, as we have developed the technology, we have a, uh, you know, a software platform that we call the NASA Platform for Autonomous Systems. And we've been using this platform for, implement, for implementing autonomous operations on many types of systems, including our own systems at Stennis that support rocket engine testing, but also systems that are uh, space systems. Uh, we're involved in autonomous capabilities related to the Gateway, for example, which is uh, a station that's going to be... Uh, on moon orbit, right, uh, as well as any other types of systems that would benefit from uh, operating autonomously. Uh, in this case, uh, this, this idea actually comes from the fact that we're also working with a group at Johnson Space Center uh, that uh, is in charge or is working on what the uh, crew, and, uh, crew health and performance, right? So uh, they have to uh, look after the astronauts and their health and their performance as they do activities or as they, you know, accomplish missions, uh, be it uh, future missions uh, on the surface of the moon or, or on Mars. And uh, so in, in that context, uh, you know, maintaining health uh, and performance uh, requires that uh, uh, many areas. One of them obviously has to be the, the physiology area in which uh, people who are knowledgeable about this uh, have to figure out uh, that what, what needs to be done physiologically in order to monitor the health and performance of the astronauts and in order to maintain. And part of maintaining health of astronauts uh, and performance is the, the activity aspect of it, the exercises, right? And so 
this calls for sort of a new look at how do you do this, uh, especially when uh, you are potentially at distances that are too far away, and you have to use equipment that will enable you to do this, such as exercise equipment or monitoring equipment, uh, as well as in this particular case, we're focused on astronauts that may be doing extra vehicular activity and they're in the suits, and therefore the suit systems are also involved. And so with our work in autonomous systems, uh, we are helping develop the entire, uh, basically, uh, framework so that uh, uh, we can incorporate uh, in what would be called uh, uh, you know, analysis of what's happening with the astronauts uh, in terms of their health and performance. We can incorporate information coming from uh, the suit systems that are providing resources for the astronauts to be active, as well the exercise, as the exercise systems that would be uh, used in order to maintain um, uh, physiological well-being. Well, Fernando, right. this sounds like a challenge of the lifetime for some college students or teams or I guess even departments at different universities. So who are you looking for? I mean, I know this isn't a singular person approach. You're looking for uh, teams to be able to go at this at all different angles. So who's the best candidate for this challenge? So these challenges are directed to university teams uh, because what we challenge is we, we basically challenge can you create this for us? Can you make this possible for us? So it, it becomes a project that needs to be addressed by a team. And so generally when we, you know, provide the idea through this program, uh, which is the Moon to Mars Exploration Systems and Habitation Academic Innovation Challenge, uh, then usually the university has uh, some professors that are mentors that uh, develop with students a proposal, uh, and they compete for funds. And the proposal has to include uh, many aspects of the project, obviously being able to do what it's been asked in terms of the idea, but also there are some educational aspects that are incorporated that have to do with uh, team composition and uh, uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, classwork uh, that may be related to the project that's uh, being executed. So generally, the, the teams involve uh, students from many, many disciplines. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, you know, we have disciplines such as obviously engineering, computer science, autonomous systems, intelligent systems, exercise science, uh, and you know, graphical user interfaces, and and many others, and, and there are some of the students that will take leadership roles, right? Mm -hmm. uh, also, because it's a team project, the teams must adhere to present milestones that correspond to NASA's systems engineering procedures. And for instance, you know, they, one of the first things they do is they, they provide a preliminary design review uh, just a few months after the project is kicked off. Well, I want to keep up with this and see which colleges get teams, particularly those from um, Mississippi, and then follow along and see who maybe their proposals get, get funded. I think this is super cool. And, Fernando, I'm a dietitian, so if you need some nutrition expertise on your team, I got you covered. I'm not in college anymore, but I can fake it <laughs> and be part of, of the team. So where can students go uh, for more information? Uh, well, there is, there is a website, uh, and I think the best thing is to uh, to do a, just a, a search uh, with uh, something like Moon to Mars Exploration Systems and Habitation Academic Innovation Challenge, or more easily, I think just write x-hab, x-hab, and then NASA, and that probably will take them to the websites that are relevant. Absolutely, it will, and that's X H A B, and Google that in yeah. NASA, and I can put it in the Good Things Facebook group as well, Fernando. I think this is super cool. I'm very impressed that this is happening here at the Cine Space Center in Mississippi, and I look forward to to seeing what you guys what you guys find and answering those really uh, cool questions. Which I saw if if af if astronauts were to do a hundred push-ups a day on Earth as part of an exercise routine, how many would they need to do? on Mars to get the same benefit? I don't know, but we'll find out, won't we, Fernando? Right. 
Right, right. And actually, this idea has a little twist that came up because of uh, conversations with a really good friend of mine. And part of what they have to do in this project is they have to develop uh, uh, an exercise device uh, that is uh, something that is potentially used for rock climbing, because rock climbing is an activity that actually uh, enables the, uh, you know, the, the, the tuning, I guess, of the muscles and bones and so on that... Uh, enable a person to have very good control of their body, right? So that should be pretty cool. So they, they, they're supposed to uh, provide some kind of a device uh, that is uh, autonomous. That means it has... Well, it's capability. all cool, Mr. Fernando. Thank you for your time. Hey, we're running out of it, but stick with us. We've got more coming up next.